you've heard about the Beagles and the Monkees, but also the orphans that have come out this week. And here is the headline from Gateway Pundit. It wasn't just Beagles and Monkees. Fauci's NIH also funded medical experiments on AIDS orphans in New York City. In August, Gateway Pundit contributor Cassandra Fairbanks broke the story on Dr. Fauci's use of taxpayer money to torture beagles in barbaric animal testing, which in itself is really not breaking news. And we'll get into all of that stuff. Dr. Fauci funded a study in Tunisia where beagle dogs were eaten alive by parasite-infected fleas or flies. So they, they have them laying there with their head inside of these nets and the flies are just eating them alive and they're watching these poor dogs just become disintegrated by ravenous bugs. Really, really just the tip of the iceberg with what government does. Dr. Fauci also spent over $16 million in taxpayer funds on distributing or disturbing toxic brain injection experiments on monkeys in 2018. And Dr. Fauci was more recently caught funding gain-of-function research in Wuhan, China, laboratory blamed for the production and the leak of the coronavirus. Fauci lied about his funding of the lab under oath numerous times. But of course, he's down with the government that does a lot of the grisly things that we're going to talk about tonight, which is why it doesn't matter how many times he commits perjury, he's going to be propped up uh, because the only other option is to kill him. Now this, Dr. Fauci's NIH was also caught funding experiments on AIDS orphans in New York City Hospital in 2004. Many of them didn't even have AIDS. The Fauci NIH approved experiments on hundreds of New York City orphans. Government agencies and pharmaceutical companies used the orphans in deadly AIDS drug trials. In 2005, the city of New York hired Vera Institute to form a final report on the drug trials. Vera was given no access to the uh, medical records for any of the children used in the trials. Their report was published in 2008. Uh, They reported that 25 children died during the drug studies and an additional 55 children died following the later studies. And according to Tim Ross, director of the child welfare program at Vera, 29% of the remaining 417 children who were used in drug studies had died, um, had also died out of a total of 532 children that are admitted to have been used. The Wikipedia writers cover up all the details as expected. No payment or compensation has been paid to any of the children using the trials or to their families. A hospital nurse later spoke out to reporters about being tested, about the testing. She reported that children were immediately getting sick, breaking out or throwing up during the testing. They were orphans at the Incarnation Children's Center in New York City. And here, you see a nice little face in the corner of that video, and that's Mr. Liam Sheff, a late great friend of mine and this show. He's the man that I uh, memorialize every, every April with the final blog post of his after he died a, a few years ago. Um, he spent many hours on this show, and we've uh, been able to talk about a, a lot of things. This was one of them. And here it is. Um, here it is. The note. This is what I don't like about Gateway Pundit on this. Note, the investigator credited with exposing this horrific study on AIDS orphans is or was an AIDS skeptic, but his research and his interviews were explosive and they were disturbing. Now, it doesn't mention his name. His name is Liam Sheff. That's the investigator who should be credited with uh, exposing this horrific story. And, um, And he's no longer with us. Now, he's an AIDS skeptic. Now, it doesn't mention his name. I don't care what the hell Liam believed um, on AIDS. And I don't know what I believe on, on the whole thing that Liam had really sketched out when it came to HIV AIDS. But I'll tell you one thing. And you can read all about it in chapter like five or six uh, in his book, Official Stories. And it's worth a read. You've got to go get Official Stories. He was a very intelligent man. This is what I can tell you. Very intelligent man. He laid it all out without prejudice. He was not anti-gay. He was not uh, for or or against anything. He, he was not driven by pol- politics and anything. And what he did gather, gather was evidence 
that whatever AIDS was or is was compounded mightily by faulty testing, by faulty testing and cures that were worse than the disease. Does that sound familiar? It should, especially since a lot of the people who are involved in that are involved in what we're living with today, namely Dr. Fauci. So I'm going to play something for you here. This is seven minutes long. We're going to listen to the whole damn thing. It's Liam Sheff talking about the NIH clinical trials on New York City orphans. Uh, This is from his website. He has told this story on my show once or twice over the years. And he uploaded this back in March of 2019. And uh, he, he deserves all the credit for things like this. Great work that was done many years ago and uh, summarily ignored. So listen to Liam Sheff laying it all out. What I want to say. I started investigating Incarnation Children's Center in about 2003. Um, I, what, what I discovered was that this thing had been, had been an orphanage. Uh, and they had the orphanage had been run by nuns and, and the nuns were I think generous uh, good women who were taking in these, these babies that had been abandoned at the hospital the orphanage is in a poor part of New York it's in a, a black and Dominican part you know a lot of immigrants and a lot of very poor people a lot of violence all that kind of stuff that, uh, that you have around poverty um now, <laughs> for some reason, uh, my my government uh, medical institution, the National Institute of Health, and various pharmaceutical companies thought that this population of kids was the ideal population to use in drug trials. <laughs> so they found a population of orphans who had nobody in the world to look out for them, and they decided that it was very important now to give these kids a lot of drugs. And they did. All of these drugs were being pumped into these kids and they were being pumped in night and day and they were, and when the kids wouldn't take the drugs they would intubate them with a tube in the nose down the throat and when the kids wouldn't do that anymore they would take them in for a surgery and cut a hole in the stomach and put a gastric tube in and pump in the drugs they would grind up the drugs with water would pump a pediasure through these tubes through a, a pumping machine and then they would take the tube and and take a syringe filled with these ground-up drugs and and shove the drugs in. What I found was that children were growing up on uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten drugs at a time uh, throughout the course of their painful lives. The drugs tended to be these recycled cancer chemotherapy drugs that were slightly altered or just renamed like uh, AZT and it's analogs. They just change the name a little bit. They change maybe the way one molecule grabs onto another. It's essentially the same drug and they change the name or they rebrand it. I learned this by interviewing nurses and child care workers and children from this place, Incarnation Children's Center. Now these kids were miserable, you know, and they had all of the effects in the body that you would associate with all of these drugs. Uh, And you would associate it with these drugs because when you read the warning labels and the, the medical histories of these drugs, you see all the problems. You see anemia. You see that they, they stop normal cell generation. They stop genetic uh, re- reproduction. They stop proteins from assembling. And so these kids are stunted. And they, you know, some of them get cancer because these drugs cause cancer. And some of them have big lumps on the back because these drugs cause uh, these protease inhibiting drugs somehow cause these lumps to appear. So y- you see this over and over again in the kids, at least you know I did and the nurses who worked there did. I reported that story as loudly and clearly and uh, I don't know, as succinctly as I could. You know, they're, they're children, they're orphans, they're being used in drug trials with very poisonous black box labeled drugs. They're, they're called black box labeled because as my uh, my government's uh, FDA or Food and Drug Administration does tests or takes notes and if if these drugs seem to kill people they'll they'll put a black box label on it or if somebody takes this drug and they have total liver failure or part of their skin peels off uh, they'll put a black box label on the drug and that's 
the, the case with all of these drugs. The skin peeling off is a drug called nevirapine. The liver failure and organ failure is AZT and its analogs. The, the lumps on the back are the protease inhibitors. A uh, number of children, you know, died uh, while I was investigating it, you know, on the drugs. One boy was given a drug called thalidomide, and you remember thalidomide, and, you know, I mean, he was being pumped with everything, and then they gave him thalidomide. And he died. Um, his name was Sion. Another girl called Cheyenne died right before I started investigating it. She had never been on the drug. She went in. She, you know, it was very important for her to be on the drugs, they said. So they put her on the drugs. Within about a, a few weeks to a month, she had a stroke. She had another stroke, and she went blind. And she died a couple months later. Um, an another girl, uh, Ashley, went you know, went in because the same thing. She didn't want to take the drugs. She refused. They put a tube in her, you know, they sent her home with her aunt, I think, who just kept giving her the drugs, and she died. Um, you know, and then I know the kids who are stunted, whose development is stunted. I know two kids who uh, have cancer as a result. One has, yeah, one, no, they both were in treatment for cancer. I think one of them is in remission from it. Um... Yeah, anyway, it's all pretty horrible, brutal stuff. Because I was only going from sort of authorized sources, you know, the National Institute of Health database, clinicaltrials.gov, and uh, the Incarnation Children's Center website before they changed it and took it down, it was easy to see that they were doing these drug experiments. I mean, it was as clear as day. This was happening all over the country. It, it's happening in, in the Dominican Republic, in India, in Africa that you can use uh, kids who have nobody to look out for them in these trials. It is a very sacrosanct thing, so they had to sort of mount a defense. And the defense that they mounted was to say that, of course there were drug trials going on in orphans who had nobody to look out for them, but we were saving their lives. You know. Now, <laughs> the only way you can say that is to not reveal uh, any of the medical records, and that's what they've done. They haven't revealed any of the medical records to see if anybody was saving anybody's lives. But you can convince people that you're saving their lives if you tell them that the kids were as good as dead anyway. But the story is not, you know, it's not permissible in the mainstream media because if you permit it, then you have to talk about the significant problems with the entire paradigm. And if you talk about the significant problems with the AIDS paradigm, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, that's really, <laughs> you might as well, I mean, I don't know, you might as well ask Catholics to renounce the Pope. It's just, it's that sacred to people. And he, then there you go. It's that sacred. He talked about things that, be, that go beyond. So yeah, Gateway Pundit, his name is Liam Sheff. And he did all of the dirty work. He did all of it. And it was all figured out. And it's just waiting for us, sitting around, happening in New York City. But he talked a, a lot about how something will go and reach religious status. And the AIDS paradigm was one of those things. Now, I am not a master at being able to articulate what his argument was and what his investigations led him to um, to ascertain in that respect, but you can go check it out. And I, I, I had said many times before, I would love to read that chapter of his book on the air one night, not on this show though, because it's too long. Then I went and I checked out the chapter and we're talking like 30 pages. I don't even know if I can do that for a Sunday stream, um, but maybe, I, I don't know. I'm just glad that we were able to give him some time here because what he uncovered and continued to talk, he would, have been, he would be having a field day. He's, he's probably happy he's dead, to be honest. What's going on right now? Because um, he, didn't have a very, he didn't have a very bright and rosy outlook on our, our future anyhow.